On. When I studied our demographic survey that we took in class, I realized there is a common link between everyone. Something we all have the same. Something that Rick needs, something that Jackie needs, something that Bill needs, something that Jennifer needs, something that Kira needs, something that I need. We all need health care. There are millions of Americans out there who cannot afford their health care. According to a story that was run on PBS, 44 million Americans are uninsured and an additional 38 million are underinsured. I've been on all sides of the health care issue. I've been well insured at work. I've been uninsured. My children have been on the CHIP health care plan through the state of Pennsylvania when we were unemployed. My mother has been struggling to afford health care. And my sister lives in Europe and has universal health care. So I've seen it all. Health care in the United States is bankrupting millions of Americans. And solving the health care crisis needs to take priority in our government before more p people are financially ruined, or worse, by their lack of health care. Through my speech, I'd like to show the audience examples of the extreme cost of medical care and health insurance, and give you some stories to illustrate the problems that occur when people can't afford their medical treatment. And then I'd like to mention the alternatives that are out there to private health care uh, alternatives that exist in other countries and that are success working successfully there. When I looked at our demographic survey, I noticed that more than 50% of our class is female. So I thought I'd use an illustration to, ex to show the costs that we can face in the future. In an article on, in Special Delivery Magazine, it stated that a normal routine delivery in the Northeast United States costs $8,541, and a cesarean section costs $14,716. So if you weren't insured, that money would have to come out of your bank account. I also looked at the Pennsylvania Department of Health, and they said that an overnight stay in Lehigh Valley Hospital alone, no doctor's visits, no medication, is $1,885. The Cornell University did a study that was for Congress that reported that U.S. health care is 15.3% of our economy. The average U.S. citizen spends $6,000 a year on health care. These are just some examples to show how enormous the cost of health care has become and how many people can't afford it any longer. Health insurance is another price that has gone up and up and up in the United States. My mother is a prime example. She was unemployed a few years ago and the only health insurance she could find cost $975 a month because of a pre-existing condition that she had which was polio that she contracted at 18 months old. Health, a lot of health insurance companies would not cover her because of those pre-existing conditions. And how can you be held responsible for something that happened to you at 18 months old? I also heard another story on the news the other day that I thought really summed up the whole issue of health insurance. There was a gentleman named James Barone in North Carolina, and he ended up robbing a bank for one dollar, sat down in the back of the bank and waited for the police to come. He did all of this because he couldn't afford his own health care. He wanted to be arrested and sent to prison because he was unemployed and could not afford to pay for his own health insurance. There are a lot of alternatives out there to private health insurance, some that have worked for years in European countries. Many people are concerned that universal health care means a decrease in the quality of their health insurance or their health care. But if you look at our system that we have currently 
in the United States, we're ranked 37 out of 190 countries. So we're not doing that well. If we switch to another system, we could be doing a lot better. The life expectancy in the United States is shorter than 27 countries. And all of these statistics are against other countries that have a universal health care system. One more example I wanted to mention is my sister. She lives in Europe, and a few years ago, she was, had a high-risk pregnancy. I know a lot of people think that universal health care means long waits and poor doctor visits, but she get, delivered her children eight weeks early. They spent three weeks in the, at the NICU. She got to see the top doctors in the country, had no waits, and all of this was at no cost for her. If she lived in the United States, even if she had private health insurance, she would probably be close to bankrupt because of the expense that was in, uh, accumulated with her children's delivery. I know that any change is frightening in the United States, but no one can look at our current health system and say that it works for everyone. People shouldn't have to choose between feeding their families and affording treatment for their medical problems. The healthcare industry is a huge spender in the United States. In the first six months of 2005 alone, they spent $183 million lobbying in Congress. Maybe if we reorganize things and the health insurance industries can spend some of that money on other programs to so it could make health care affordable for the rest of the people, things would work out. There is a plan designed by um, a group of doctors that are proposing universal health care in the United States, and they say that if you keep the money that's funneled into Medicare and Medicaid, then cover the gap with 7% of coming from employers and 2% coming from individual income tax, that that would cover health care universally for the United States. I'm not an economist or a politician, but these plans have been designed and developed by people out there who know more about the health care system in the United States. And we really need to find a plan that works for everyone. <laughs>